teaching tool time. Kahoot is one of the many lecture quizzing tools that can be used to post questions for the students, and the students can answer them by using their laptops or mobile devices. The answers can be reviewed as answer statistics together with the students after a given time. These quizzes or answer reviews can be used either as discussion starters, initial activators, or as an end of the class reviews. Kahoot is essentially a gamified version of a web-based polling tool, where the questions are multiple choice and each answer is rated by the correctness as well as the time used for the answer. Each poll or a game has an ID number that a teacher can share with the class. Students then use their mobile devices or laptops to enter the game and after the game is set up, the students compete either individually or as teams against each other. Of course, these competitive elements such as scores and top player lists can be turned off as well, which is actually what we recommend. For each question, a student or participant is given four options to answer. After everyone has answered or the timer has run out, the correct option as well as the amount of students that chose the correct option are displayed. After that, the teacher moves the game to the next question and this repeats as long as there are questions. At the end, the scores are shown with the top three players indicated in a podium-like fashion. There are also three other types of games in addition to the quiz, which include a jumble, where you try to put the answer options to a correct order, a survey, where you answer questions but don't try to match any given correct answer, and a discussion, which is basically a four-step Likert scale questionnaire to spark discussion by soliciting opinions with prepared questions. To start using Kahoot, all you really need to do is to register yourself as a teacher into the system. For educational institutions, the software is free to use. No registration is needed for students. After logging in, you are given the option to either create your own game or select one that's previously made and published by someone else in the Kahoot community. For the game, you need to provide at least a title, a short description and a targeted level of participants, school, university, etc. But you can also tune it up with an image, language and visibility settings or even add an introductory video to the game. You can make your games either for your use only, or you can share them with other teachers. After creating the game, or the Kahoot as they call it, you can start adding questions. Each question needs to question itself and at least two and at most four answer options. Questions can also have images and videos attached to them, as well as time limit for the answers. After the questions are done, save your Kahoot and when in class, start it up and share the game pin with the students. Remember to give enough time for the device setups, etc. And make sure beforehand that everyone attending has a device capable of joining your Kahoot. Go to kahoot.com and log in. At this point, you should already have your Kahoot either selected or prepared. Find the Kahoot you want to use either by searching for it or by going to My Kahoots and click the Play button. Set the game options to your liking and select if the students will play as individuals or as teams. Show the game pin to the students and wait for everyone to join. You can monitor for inappropriate user nicknames, 
or use the selection in the previous stage to generate random nicknames to prevent any issues with these. When everyone has joined, click Start. Students navigate their mobile devices to kahoot.it or use the dedicated app and insert to gain PIN and their nicknames to their clients. After everyone has joined and teacher starts the Kahoot, questions are presented to the students in the teacher's browser with a symbol next to each option. These symbols correspond to the selections students can make in their own clients. The questions progress either automatically after a given time or manually when the teacher moves on to the next question. When everyone has answered the questions, results for the questions are shown. In the end, the results of the entire Kahoot are shown and in the case of a survey, the data can be downloaded as an Excel sheet. If done incorrectly, using Kahoot during a class can cause anxiety to those students who prefer not to compete and most likely would like to be left alone and quiet in the classroom. Rating and highlighting students into order of success can lead to demotivation and feelings of unequality amongst the rest of the class. Kahoot requires a bit of preparation from both the teacher and the students. The students only have to make sure they have a suitable device they can participate with. For some, this can be a bit too much. So it would be good for the teacher to have an extra device or two for those students. The questions, if done without much thought, can actually make students more passive. Now they don't have to engage with the teaching with words. They can just push a button on their phones. The key is to get from the Kahoot and its results to discussing the topics of the Kahoot with the students. There's a limit of how long the questions and answers can be and formatting for specialized questions can be tricky. These can be worked around, for example, by using a PowerPoint to show the questions. But longer questions can be difficult to answer anyway. Backing up your questions from Kahoot's can be challenging, especially if you have a lot of them. At the moment, there's no direct export feature in the tool itself. The tempo of the Kahoot can be something that needs to be thought about. How long of a section from the class you want the game to take up? On the other hand, how long do you want to give the students time to think about the question and the possible answers? How many questions do you want to use? If a student is bombarded with a huge amount of questions with a speed envied by a cheetah, how does that aid in the learning process? Remember to give the students enough time to think, too. If used correctly, Kahoots can provide discussion in the classroom and target a bit wider audience than the usual routine, where a teacher poses a question to the entire class, and after a few minutes of silence, the one active student answers the question, while others remain silent for the duration of the academic year. The time used for that kind of questioning and playing a Kahoot is pretty much the same, but each student should be more inclined to answer. Although not completely anonymous, the students are allowed to use clean nicknames and don't have to stand against as much peer pressure as when answering out loud. The Kahoots can be used to prepare for the topics of the upcoming class in the minds of the students. It has been found that the so-called tuning questions can have a positive effect on the learning outcomes. If these questions are answered again after the class as review questions, the key points of the class can be emphasized and thus learned more efficiently. The questions from the previous class could also be used as the tuning questions of the next class, as a kind of a reminder of this is what we discussed last time and this is where we left off. The gamification aspect is good and the software is definitely designed to be visually something else than dull perhaps even geared towards younger school kids. But a lot of these things can be changed in the settings, such as are the answers scored, are the scores visible, etc. And of course, if a Kahoot is a good one, you can easily reuse it later as well as edit it by adding, removing or changing questions. The Kahoots can be participated from the link kahoot.it 
but signing up and managing your Kahoots are done from Kahoot.com. Know that there exists many other similar tools, but these might have additional restrictions to their use, such as the amount of students per class, price, or a manually verified student registration taking days.